UVBI again has been used since I think 1919. Um, UV and um, um, where it really got it to some of the scientific validity was with a Dr. George Miley back in uh, late 30s and early 40s. He was a surgeon at Hahnemann Hospital in uh, Philadelphia. And um, in those days, this was pre-antibiotics, um, he was a surgeon, an obstetrical surgeon. And so he did a study and he looked uh, and he was using UB, UBI. UBI, again, is the blood, blood is taken out and it's exposed to ultraviolet light, right? And he used the full spectrum, but you can now, now we've, we're using either A or C, um, UVA, UVC. Um, but you can use the full spectrum. There's still some of the original machines around called not machines, very few. But um, anyway, when you do this to the blood, if you, if you understand the blood and you look at the actual molecular structure of blood, is a red blood cell is almost identical to uh, chlorophyll, the thing that that's, makes plants green and that is involved in photosynthesis. And photosynthesis, as you may recall, is the sunlight hitting the plant and turning that sunlight, in, turning it into energy, converting it into glucose. Okay, so in order to do that, the, uh, the chlorophyll must have a molecular structure that is what, it, what, it's, what we call photosensitive. That is, it's able to pick up and hold on to light and to use it. And that's because of the structure of the molecule there. Well, our hemoglobin has the same thing. So it picks up the light. It's called a photoreceptive, photosensitive um, molecule. Picks up that light and that light energy is used. And we, we found out that it stimulates, one of the things it stimulates is the uh, endogenous or inside production of hydrogen peroxide and other things. So this UBI actually, again, stimulates uh, oxygen production, oxygen, um, oxygen consumption, and it stimulates the immune system powerfully. So when D George Miley did his studies, and by the way, his studies were published in the American Journal of Surgery, I think in 41 or 42, after five or six years of clinical studies. And that's a regular peer-reviewed journal. Um, but, I mean, uh, I forget the exact details, but uh, people that were in mild sepsis, that is bacteria in the blood after having surgery, 100% got better with one or two treatments. Those who were in moderate, which meant that they were probably, their, their white counts were probably, they had gone sky high, now they're probably going down because they're probably getting fatigued and they're really, start, really getting sick, um, uh, again had 100%. And then the people that would, they, in those days they called it moribund, but it's probably what we call septic shock now, uh, was only about 48% or something like that, which is no better than we do now, because septic shock, you're no longer dying from the bacteria in the blood, you're dying from the, the endotoxins that have been produced by the bacteria. So now we have different therapies for that, we, we, have, we have things that bind endotoxin. But, but again, it, in terms of its, its effectiveness at killing the bacteria, Viruses, etc., it, it gets rid of those, it, it annihilates them. Um, uh, but it also stimulates the immune system, uh, increases oxygen utilization. And